Good morning, friends. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I am the pastor here at Glencoe United Methodist Church, and I am so thankful that you are back with us again for another daily devotional. Full disclosure before we get started. I have a co-worker with me today. Her name is Gracie. She is my terrier boxer mix. She's three years old, and she's a sweetheart. But if you see her in the background, it's because we she came to work with me today. She wanted to... Uh, go with me out the door so I figured I would bring her here and and let her roam around in my office and um and uh come to work with me. So, just so you know, she'll be here. <laughs> Today's spiritual discipline that we're going to be talking about is called Lexio Divina, which is Latin for divine reading. It is a meditative, prayerful form of reading scripture. It's a way to allow God to speak to us while we read scripture in a very intentional way. And I think and I've done this many a times and, and I think it is a great thing. It's just it's hard to sit still and it's a challenge to do that. But if you do and you do this properly, it can really be meaningful. So I would highly recommend that y'all try this today with the passage that we're actually going to talk about. I'm going to go through the passage real quickly, and we're going to talk about the steps, but I want you to actually do the Lexio Divina practice as we go along. You're going to go through five phases, as they call it, to complete the Lexio Divina. Now, you may be wondering, what, why, is, why are we doing something that's translated from Latin? Well, it's a, a old spiritual discipline, and it originated with St. Benedict of Nursia. And St. Benedict was a well-known saint in the Catholic Church and in the Eastern Orthodox Church. And he, started, and he was known for starting about 12 monastery communities. And he even wrote a book uh, called the rules of St. Benedict, and that's where the Lexio Divina actually originates. So he's had a lot of influence on the church and everything from that. And you may be wondering, well, why are we doing this? Can't we just read scripture and get what God has to say to us? Well, sure, you can. But this is a very intentional spiritual reading. Marjorie J. Thompson says in her book, that spiritual reading is a meditative approach to the written word. It is concerned with not with the speed or the volume, but with depth and receptivity. That is because the purpose of spiritual reading is to open ourselves up to how God may be speaking to us in and through any particular text. The primary focus of spiritual reading, though, for Christians is and has always been Scripture allowing ourselves to be addressed. So this is why we do this particular practice, because it is important for us to learn how to listen to God and to take the time to allow God to speak to, to us. Now, let's go ahead and jump into what Lexio Divina is. Lexio Divina is a five-phase system where you, st where you enter into the practice and you exit out of the practice. I know that sounds weird, but you'll understand here in a minute. There are five official phases. There's Lexio, which is the sacred reading. There's Meditatio, which is sacred meditation. Silencia, sacred silence. Oratio, sacred prayer. And then you have Contemplio, which is sacred being or sacred con contemplation, if you will. Now, I know that that all sounds really weird. Just remember, read, meditate, silence pray, being, okay? Just remember those five things. I give you more information just so you have it. Now, one thing I like to do before I do Lexio Divina is I like to, first off, find a quiet space or a space where I can focus on what I'm doing. Some people, that means going outside and enjoy and being in nature, for some people, it means finding the quietest place in the entire home. Some people, it means going somewhere else. <clears throat> it just depends on you. You do what you need to do so that way you can focus on what you're doing and not be distracted. The idea is to reduce distractions. With that in mind, if you have a cell phone that's a smartphone, please, please 
put it away. Put it on silent. 15 minutes is not going to hurt you. You just went without it all night. Promise a few more minutes isn't going to hurt you. But what we're going to but what you do is you reduce the distractions and you find a quiet place. This helps you concentrate and it makes it almost sacred. Maybe you can find a place and actually choose a place from now on to do your spiritual disciplines. Maybe that's a way of doing it and then you designate a place in your home or outside or wherever and make that a sacred place for you and your spiritual life. Now, I like to consider praying prior to starting the entire Lexio Divina discipline. And that's because I look at this whole thing as a form of prayer. And so I pray, I begin my prayer beforehand. Usually I say something along the lines of, Lord, speak to me during this time. Open my heart and mind to what you would have me to learn and hear. There's something of that nature. You do you. You say what you need to say to God. Don't let anybody else dictate what you need to say to God. Because that is your relationship with God. After that, you're actually going to get started with phase one. And what you're going to do there is you're going to read the scripture. So you read that passage of scripture twice. Now, the scripture that you choose is, is totally up to you. I'm using the Daily Revised Lectionary, which has scripture for every single day of the year. If you don't want to use that, if you're using, if you're going through a devotional book, use that scripture. But I would recommend that if you are going to do that, read the scripture that it tells you, and then do and then do the um, lexio divina with that, and then read your devotion after. So that way, you allow God to speak to you as well as the person who's actually writing the devotional. You read the scripture twice, so that way you have it. What I would recommend is read it once in silence to yourself, and then the second time read it aloud. And pay close attention to what you're reading. Pay close attention to what's standing out to you. What's, what words are standing out? What, what makes you uncomfortable? What's challenging you? Is it a different word? Do what you need to do to get the most out of this. But a lot of times, Scripture is so intentional it's very interesting how we all focus on different parts because of our experiences in our lives. So, once you have read it twice, then you're going to focus on the things that stand out to you. And you're going to interact with them. Why do they stand out to you? Do they bring up memories, hopes, concerns, things like that in your mind, in your heart? And if they do, think about them. Let them stew. Let them uh, re reflect on them. And think about why the scripture is standing out to you and why it's, it's having an impact on you. And then think about what is the scripture trying to tell you. So this is the point where you put yourself into the equation. It is a, your time to allow the Holy Spirit to speak. And during this part, you sit back. Be silent, be still, and let God's Holy Spirit tell you why this text is something that you needed to hear and why it is important for you to and important for you to read and what you need to take away from this text. After that, you take the time to respond to what you just experienced or felt or what you were hearing from God. If you're angry at what you're feeling, it's okay to Tell God you're angry. God can handle it. If you're sad, now's the time to tell God. Remember, this whole thing is a form of prayer. If you want, you can write things down. Some folks like to journal. So this would be a good time to put, write down your responses and your thoughts and feelings about this. And it's a, journaling is a, form, is a form of prayer too. It can be. So I want to encourage you to do that if that makes you more comfortable than speaking out loud or speaking to God. This is a time where you can express yourself however you feel in the di in a dialogue with God. Just make sure it's done appropriately based on where you're at. Obviously, you don't want to go to a coffee shop and start yelling to God. <laughs> but this is where you can 
express your contentment, your disgust, your confusion of the things that you're reading and feeling and hearing. After all that, you sit with God and allow God to be there with you. Because remember that God never stops speaking to us. And a question that I have for you is, are you listening to God? Do you let God speak to you and listen? And in this moment, try to think about how you're going to live, how you're going to be in, in relationship with God and how God's presence will impact and affect your life. Don't focus on the scripture here. Just relax a little bit. Sit in silence. If your mind wanders, try to just ease it back. It's important that when you leave this exercise that you don't feel like you're tired. Instead, you're supposed to feel rejuvenated. You're supposed to feel encouraged. You're supposed to feel more or fuller than you did when you came into it. And remember that this is not going to leave you for the rest of the day or week. This will sit with you. God will continue to speak with you. This scripture will be in there with you. And it's important that you, that you think about that. And then lastly, pray yourself out. Remember, you opened it up in prayer, as, or as I suggested, and then you got to close it in prayer. you got to end it with an amen. And that is the main thing that I would like for you to take away. That was our, our, our five steps plus opening and closing prayer. And I hope that you are able to do that. We're going to, so the first step that we did was the Lexio, which was the sacred reading. That's when you read the scripture twice. Then the meditate, the meditation, and that was where you thought about what stood out to you the most. And then the silence allows you to reflect even further. And then the sacred prayer, I that's the part I referred to as talking to God, reflecting with God. And then sacred being, which is digesting the information that you have taken in and going out with that information, going out into the world with God's presence in your mind and the scripture in your mind to think about how it is going to shape you and how and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and shape you. And then, of course, you close it with prayer. And so today I want you to try it with a scripture. Now, we're not going to talk about the scripture today because I do not want to influence your sacred time using the Lexio Divina. However, I do want to actually at least give you the scripture I want you to try and read it. And then I'm going to let you go out and do what you need to do. So here is our scripture lesson from today. And it's Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 8 from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear now the word of God. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock, and you have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnants of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up the shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And in his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, As the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives who brought out and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the land of the north and out of the lands where he had driven them, then 
they shall live in their own land. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, I hope and pray and challenge you to try this sacred practice, this spiritual discipline this day, because it is a beautiful thing that will allow you to grow in your relationship with God because you're spending time in prayer, and any time you spend in prayer helps you grow in your relationship. You need to listen, because if you don't listen, then you're not going to get anything out of this practice. Connection. If you don't actually try this practice, you're not going to be able to connect with God further, and it may not allow you to connect with others. When you are listening and learning about yourself and reflecting, and God is speaking to you, God may be talking to you about those around you to help you remember things that you maybe didn't know that you remembered, things that you need to know to help connect with others, with those who are your neighbors. And then, of course, your faith. It helps you grow in your faith. It helps your faith strengthen because as you depend on the Lord, as you depend on God more and more, you are allowed the opportunity, the opportunity to be more spiritually sound to be more comfortable and sure in your faith. To learn more about about God improves our faith. And why? Because we learn more about God. And the more we learn about God, the more we can trust the Lord. Go in peace this day, friends. Serve the Lord always. All glory in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Take care.